Welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host, Sheridan Nichols, and today I have Jack Spurgeon with us, and we're going to talk about EMS Week. It's a great week that the fire department gets involved with here in the city, and what takes place during this week? Well, every year we've tried to do something on these special occasions to recognize those men and women that serve our community as well as other communities, and so we had a great opportunity this year to expand that and, and partnership with a lot of agencies that do provide that EMS service. Uh, and so we thought we'd do a kickoff celebration, which is uh, most people have seen how enjoyable that is with this kickoff. And so we want to expand and make sure that we make it bigger each and every year and do a continuous thing. And we're hoping to let everybody know that the recognition is really for everybody who is classified as everyday heroes and that's what it's all about because most of the time uh, when we visit those people um, they're usually under a emotional stressful situation and we just want to make it on a little more calmer note so that you know they could actually say thank you or just come out and enjoy and see and how much training what kind of equipment we got so that they can really enjoy that that part of the EMS. Well, and I, I love the name Everyday Heroes. I mean, we definitely think of our fire department as that way and EMS, but to, to recognize other community members and like you said, in a different light that's got a little bit more fun atmosphere. And I'm sure all the kids loved the inflatables and, and just the environment. And I think the key is focusing on education, right? So that we're a little bit more knowledgeable in case something does happen. Right, because most people you know, they really don't think about that happening to them until it actually happens. And when that situation happens, there's a lot of information that needs to be gathered or should be having a, a pan to help expedite the situation so mm -hmm. we can bring it under control a lot quicker. And so if we can get that education out there and show them what to do and just let them know they should classify themselves as everyday heroes if they went on to do that extra training or as a caregiver, because they do do a lot of help for us or gather a lot of information that is, is great uh, for us to have early on so that we can, you know, we always look at all these trauma patients and stuff like that. You know, we've got that golden hour, mm -hmm. uh, especially on major trauma victims. If they can get to the hospital and get treated and get through the whole uh, aspect of medical treatment within that first hour, then their chances of surviving are a whole lot greater. And there is a unique relationship between EMS and the fire department. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, the, the fire department in the early 80s uh, started running their engines as first responders. And everybody in the department had to be at least an EMT, EMT IV level. And so we've seen a need due to our call volume uh, to go to providing EMS. Mm -hmm. And so we partnership with the life-saving crew in the early 90s. And then it just kept escalating until we seen the need for the city to start providing that EMS service to their citizens. And so um, that fell under the fire departments. And so we've ended up getting our EMS units and we was able to get legislature in the state of Tennessee to pass the law so we can color scheme our apparatuses the same as our fire apparatuses. So you, that's why you see the black and red ambulances out there. And so they distinguishedly know that that's our personnel responding to their situation. And you said you're super busy. I mean, 4,000 calls, is that a year or averaging? Or That's average a year wow. uh, here just in the city of Bristol, Tennessee. And we do run some in Bristol, Virginia, which would be a portion of those calls. Uh, but we have to partnership with other departments uh, because of the call volume. We have four EMS units, and two of them are front line that we staff as ALS Advanced Life Support and we have the capability of personnel if the call volume gets overwhelming that we can put a third one in place if need be and then if it gets worse than that then we've got partnerships with Solomon County EMS, Bristol Life Saving Crew, Amherst Service of Bristol. So it's a, a lot uh, when we talk about EMS. Well and it's a huge benefit for everybody at home too to know that it's one and the same or that you work coincide together. I'm sure it just makes you feel a little bit safer knowing that that relationship exists out there. And I think really the nice thing about EMS week and some of the things that the fire department does is it really focuses on education. And you mentioned earlier, 
um, I think right before we started, that there is something literally every month that you try and do to help the city of Bristol in terms of education. Yeah, we developed what we call our BEST program, which is Bristol's Essential Safety Training. And we try to come up with something either through the uh, advertisement of this television show or then we do it through uh, just going out to the community, mm -hmm. to schools, uh, to civic groups, uh, to workplaces and teaching fire extinguisher training, you know, smoke trailers to show them what it's like in Smokey, to show them the benefit of smoke detectors, mm -hmm. home home safety, which is coming up for long that we'll have something on. So there's many things that we try to push out there. Well, listen, Jack, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Find more of Inside Bristol online at youtube.com slash watch BTN TV.